Good morning, morning from Dubrovnik. We got in last night and already we've managed to make some observations and the first of which is that everything is on a hill. If you need to go anywhere, you go up a hill. If you need to come home, you still go up a hill. There are hills and stairs everywhere, which is great if you want a nice free gym. So we just had a lovely coffee at a place called Kugito. It was divine, but probably about a euro more expensive than any other coffee that we've had since we landed in Europe. So just be mindful of that if you're going to be after a very nice coffee. We are now headed out for another free walking tour. I know that they'll obviously include lot of Dubrovnik's history but many of the places that we're going to on the walking tour are also Game of Thrones filming locations. I don't know how much of that our tour guide will touch on but we hope at least a little bit of it because if you don't know Dubrovnik was used as King's Landing in especially seasons two and three. This is where the Walk of Shame was filmed in Game of Thrones. Shame. 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 Bling, 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 bling. Shame. just finished our walking tour and it was really interesting because the history of Dubrovnik is so different than that of Zadar and Split. It's a relatively new city compared to those and it really wasn't conquered by anyone. Slavic tribes lived here very early on and for 500 years it was its own republic. What was it called? The Republic of Ragusa. Republic of Ragusa for 500 years until Napoleon conquered it. And then from that, you just jump right into Yugoslavia and then present day Dubrovnik in Croatia. They just ruled themselves, I guess, under the protection of the Ottoman Empire because they kind of paid them in gold. But yeah, very independent and so different than the other cities that we visited that have been ruled by so many different cultures and peoples. And that was generally the way that they kept themselves themselves as well. It wasn't just through diplomacy and also through gold, but because of the absolutely massive city walls that you see now, then fundamentally no one could penetrate it. The Republic technically fell because of Napoleon who basically struck a deal to kind of get invited in uh, for the purposes of replenishing his armies before they tried to march on Russia. So that was the only reason. Had it not been for that, then it's possible that Dubrovnik could have still been a republic in its own right today. It turns out that all the churches in Croatia are free to enter, so we are starting with St. Blaise's Church. 
despite the fact that we could have sworn we saw people go inside, that was closed. So we're going into this one instead, which is the Cathedral of the Assumption of St. Mary. We're now going to head inside the Jesuit Church of St. Ignatius. We weren't supposed to film in there, but we snuck a few videos, which I'm glad we did because the main altar I found really beautiful. And I also thought it was interesting how the colors they used were far more vibrant than in other churches. So we went to the supermarket, got a couple of bread rolls, some salami, and a banana for me. That came to three euros thirty-two, but literally the supermarket was our only option because we've looked around and everything is crazy expensive here. Like this is probably one of the most expensive places we've been to in Europe up to now. With that, I don't unfortunately think we're going to be eating out, but certainly if we can keep things to about this cost, then I think we're going to do okay. Yeah, I'm really happy that we tried a lot of traditional foods before we arrived here because the restaurants just seem an astronomical price. Ridiculous. It is just past 4 p.m. and we've come back to our accommodation a little early, which is generally unexpected. But we wanted to have a heart to heart with you and kind of tell you about some of the things that we've noticed on our first day here in Dubrovnik. And some of them have come as a little bit of a shock to us. So we wanted to tell you about them. So if you decide to come here, then you're not faced with the same surprises that we've been and maybe we should have done more research or this is widely known and for some reason we missed it but we have kind of felt at least initially that we've been priced out of the city we're coming from Italy like Rome which we knew was more expensive even like Zadar and Split in Croatia this is Europe we're aware that it's not cheap here but Dubrovnik is more expensive than every other city we've been to so far. And so it got us concerned that we just wouldn't be able to see the historical sites or do the things we wanted to. So initially we were having a look at going to places like the city walls and to a fortress that served as like the Red Keep in Game of Thrones. And there was also a monastery that we wanted to check out because that has like one of the walls all those pharmacies and all of that kind of thing. And individually, we saw the prices and they were staggering. Like the fortress in itself was 15 euros, the city walls just on their own, 35. And I think also certain museums were a minimum of 10 on their own. Thankfully, we did discover that there is such a thing as the Dubrovnik Pass, which we thought covered some stuff, but not everything. And certainly the website leaves you under the impression that it doesn't include certain aspects like the fortress but when we actually rocked up to the tourist office then it did turn out that all of that was included and so for a 24-hour period then we're spending 35 euros per person in order to do those things and there's also access to a number of other museums but we're not necessarily as interested in those. Thankfully that part of it has kind of managed to be sewn up and we're going to really take advantage of that tomorrow which is it's exciting like yeah we're excited about that part. yeah like everybody says you have to do the city walls when you're here um so we were genuinely panicked for a second because we thought we weren't going to get to do it yeah like spending 35 euros just to go on the city walls is 70 euros oh. and it's rated number one on TripAdvisor, so it had us really concerned so this was a good find because Definitely. it includes a lot of 
things. Yeah, so that was a saving grace at least. And it seems like if you want to scale it out to be longer, because they have like one day, three day, and seven day options, and those only scale up by 10 euros each. So actually, if you are going to be here for a while, and you do plan on sort of making sure you do like a few things a day, then maybe that's definitely something to look into. So thankfully that was good, but obviously it's still more than we would normally like to stretch in our budget especially considering what we've been doing up to now. So that was a bit of a shock. But I think what has also really taken us by surprise has actually been the restaurants. So we've been obviously in a number of cities by now, if you've been following our adventures so far. And up to now, generally speaking, the tourist stuff has been the tourist stuff. The tourist stuff has come with its own price and we just accepted that that's what you do to visit things. But more often than not, the food is always pretty cost effective. Like even outside of supermarkets, like restaurants are generally pretty cheap and you can get some good bang for your buck. Yeah, like in Rome, which capital city, expensive, we went to a very highly rated and recommended restaurant. We had two main courses, two drinks and a dessert for 40 euros. Same within Sorrento. Yeah. We had two mains, two drinks, and a dessert, I think, also for 40 euros. Yeah. Even in regards to coffees and cappuccinos in Italy, actually the rest of Croatia too, like Zadar and Split. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they are tourist destinations. They are popular too. Yeah. We have paid no more than six euros for two cappuccinos. That's been the most. Whereas today, the only thing we've treated ourselves to is two cappuccinos. And they have cost eight fifty, so that's two euros and fifty cents more. And you notice the same with beer. Yeah, exactly. Beer is minimum two euros more expensive for exactly the same stuff than anywhere else. Equally, though, we've had a look at restaurant boards just in case there was maybe something that was like a little hidden gem, like a little mm. Canova or something like that that has seemingly served us pretty well in the past. But even then minimum cost of a dish is 15 euros for everything and that's even for just like a simple margarita pizza when considering actually like even in rome florence venice etc you could find like a margarita pizza for like eight euros mm -hmm. like obviously gar no guarantees of quality or anything like that but generally you'd expect it to be decent whereas that's a unilateral price for practically any main course anywhere and you have zero guarantee that it's actually going to be any good yeah i mean it's double the price basically for pizza here mm -hmm. but that was really the cheapest thing most things on the menu were actually over 20 euros yeah. so instead of getting two drinks two mains and a dessert you'd get two mains yeah. and who knows the quality as you said because when we we're in other countries getting those dishes they were actually highly rated restaurants yeah, and even little bakeries and things like that, which usually are a pretty decent place to get like a reasonably priced sandwich for like maybe three euros mm -hmm. or something like that, twice the price here. All that to say that we're not going to be eating out here. Correct. <laughs> we're going to be doing all grocery store meals because generally this is a huge markup. Mm -hmm. Definitely if you're eating out. Yeah. Even maybe a little bit on tourist attractions. Yeah, but thankfully very very thankfully indeed groceries appear to be about the same mm -hmm. which is good because it then means that we can still manage to keep the cost down but obviously it would have been nice in a city like Dubrovnik to have been able to have actually treat ourselves a little bit but it feels like we just can't this time around yeah. which is a bit disappointing and I guess the other thing that has us feel a little bit strange today is the fact that we're back in our accommodation so early and we feel a little bit stuck mm. because our accommodation is about a 20, 25 minute walk yeah. outside of the old city. And again, the reason we had to book this is because of the price of staying in the old city. It is a heavy walk in the sense that, as mentioned earlier in the video, there's hills. Hills are everywhere and they are pretty steep inclines. So unlike other cities we've stayed in, it's not like we can just easily come back to the accommodation in the middle of the day, no. grab new things or whatever we need. It's one of those things like once you go out for the day, you're not going to come back multiple times. No. So that's why 
we kind of ran out of things to do this afternoon based on cost. And then also we could have gone to the beach, which would have been free, but we didn't have our bathing suits with us. Yeah. Also, beach is a very, very loose term. Yeah. It's a couple of spits of concrete and rocks jutting into a cliffside. It's, there's, there's no sand. But we hope <laughs> to check it out. Yeah. In the next few days. We'll, st- we'll still check it out because it seems to be in an interesting location just outside the city walls. So we'll still give it a pump. But yeah, that was a bit surprising too. Yeah. I hope you didn't find this too much of a downer. No. Like at the end of the day, we do recognize that we are coming from an incredibly privileged position to even be here. Like, and fundamentally, as mentioned at the top of this video, this is still an amazing place. Like, this is still like really worth a visit but i think it's just worth really preparing yourself mentally and financially Mm -hmm. for the fact that it's just going to be hellishly expensive here yeah like if you have money you can have the most amazing experience and time here and we'll still have a great time absolutely it's just that we didn't quite expect it to be this expensive so we're having to do a little bit more planning and that's fine yeah, onwards and upwards, um, but obviously for now, I mean, we're not really planning on doing much else. So I just heard some thunder outside. Maybe so it's good we came back. Probably a good idea. Um, I mean, I was hoping we might even get out on the little patio that comes with our accommodation, but maybe not in this weather. <laughs> so uh, I think that's pretty much us for today. So we'll catch up with you tomorrow. So until then, take care. And keep smiling. <laughs>